My rent currently is $4.75 plus utilities. In total, my cost comes out to about $5.30 a month. What's your average monthly income? On average, my monthly income is $2,300 and it's not taxed. Sometimes, you know, it varies. I save almost $1,000 a month. So why don't you have health insurance? I'm young right now and currently don't need health insurance. Probably don't want to spend $200 a month. In this state, a 26-year-old female non-smoker with no pre-existing conditions can get a policy for $96 a month. It's $96 a month, but then that's almost, that's $1,200 a year you're spending on health insurance. And honestly, I feel it's ridiculous that we live in a first world country where I have to pay for basic, basic um, health care. We hear a lot these days about 45 million Americans who don't have health insurance. One commentator has declared that their ranks are equal to the combined populations of Oklahoma, Connecticut, Iowa, Mississippi, Kansas, Arkansas, Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, West Virginia, Nebraska, Idaho, Maine, New Hampshire, Hawaii, Rhode Island, Montana, Delaware, North Dakota, South Dakota, Alaska, Vermont, and Wyoming. Would America conceivably turn its back on the citizens of 23 states? Ask a former Clinton advisor. In most European countries and Canada, the government pays for and rations health care for all citizens. Why not us? Why not outlaw the health insurance industry altogether and have government be responsible for everyone's medical care? But before we turn over everyone's health care decisions to government bureaucrats, shouldn't we ask, just who are the uninsured in America? According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 17 million of those without health insurance live in households having over $50,000 in annual income. That's 38% of the uninsured in America. In fact, 9 million, 20% of the uninsured, reside in households pulling down more than $75,000 a year. Uh, most of us would agree that people like that should probably be able to afford some type of coverage. Insurance to them is just not a good buy. It's something that they don't have a priority for in many cases. And then there are the young invincibles. Over 18 million of the uninsured are people between the ages of 18 and 34. They spend more than four times as much on alcohol, tobacco, entertainment, and dining out as they do for out-of-pocket spending on health care. They represent 40% of the uninsured in America. What do you think that you spend each month uh, dining out? I spend about 300 a month on average. I go out to eat about 12 times a month. I spend three to $400 a month going out to clubs and bars or entertainment. But what if they get sick or injured and they don't have any savings? They know the U.S. healthcare system will still give them medical care. Um, I, you know, I bike everywhere in the city, so I have um, gotten hit by, by drivers uh, twice, and one time I did end up in the hospital. No, I didn't have health insurance, but I was treated and billed for later. Mm -hmm. How much was the bill? Do you remember? Honestly, I don't because I didn't bother to pay for it. <laughs> Since 1965, when Lyndon Johnson signed Medicare and Medicaid into law, many Americans have become accustomed to the idea that someone else should pay for their health care. These days, federal law requires that any hospital must provide care to anyone who comes within 250 yards of an emergency room, regardless of ability or willingness to pay. If you don't have any money, you get a Band-Aid, a foot in the ass, and you're out the door. Contrary to Hollywood depictions, the U.S. has a significant health care safety net. Studies have found that the uninsured tend to have, get about 50 to 60 percent as, as much care as, say, someone who is insured. We spend a, more than $1,000 for every man, woman, and child who's uninsured in this country on charity care. So they, they are getting a significant amount of care. And across the nation, there's an extensive system of low or no-cost community health care centers and free health care clinics. One of the things I found is that they have amazing resources for people without insurance here. One of the, the places that I've gone is the Lion Martin Women's Health Center, and I got an a annual exam. They tested me for a bunch of things, and um, I mean, as long as you're within certain income levels, and in this case, if you're a woman, but there are other resources depending on, you know, what you are, and they're just friendly, they treat you like a person, they're like, okay, what do you need, what can we do for you? And what do they charge? 
it's sliding scale. Um, in my case, because I wasn't making much at the time, it was free. 14 million people without health insurance are eligible for government health care programs like Medicaid and SCHIP, but choose not to enroll. They represent 31 percent, nearly one-third, of the uninsured in America. At Parkland Hospital in Dallas, where President Kennedy was rushed after being shot, the ER is a primary source of health care for the poor. Many Parkland patients have Medicaid, while others have no health insurance. Yet they're treated the same. They get identical care from the same doctors, regardless of ability to pay. And whenever someone goes into Parkland Memorial seeking care, um, quite often they are uninsured. And of, of course it's to the, the advantage of the hospital staff to try to sign people up for coverage if they qualify. But th they tend to fail about half the time. And, and the reason is, is that people are getting the same care regardless whether they have coverage for Medicaid or SGIP or, or not. The U.S. has 12 million illegal immigrants who don't buy health insurance but still get health care. So there are estimates that about maybe 10 million, possibly more of the uninsured are, are in fact undocumented workers or at least people who were, are foreign born. Uh, the rates of uninsurance for people that are, are foreign born is much higher than the native born Americans. And so that will always be a problem and of course if you can get something for free, you know, why would you buy insurance? Well that's, we create the disincentive to have people walk through the ER and try to get charity care simply because they can. In fact, the U.S. even provides free medical care to people who still live inside Mexico. Residents of Mexican border towns like Naco Sonora are able to request compassionate entry at the border crossing, where they are picked up by American ambulances and taken to emergency rooms like the one at the Copper Queen Hospital in Bisbee, Arizona. In 2004, the Copper Queen had uncompensated care cost of nearly half a million dollars due to compassionate entry patients. So how many are truly uninsured? Around 8 million. Just 18 percent of the 45 million that we hear about so often. A small minority of people slip through the cracks through no fault of their own. However, in any nation, there's a group of people who refuse to participate in society or take responsibility for their own well-being. Even if our government attempted to force them to receive regular health care, many wouldn't comply. So why do we keep hearing about a crisis of 45 million uninsured? Maybe it's because the problem of Americans without health insurance is exaggerated and used as a smokescreen by many reformers who advocate socialized health care financing. But with so much at stake, our lives, our liberties, our health, is it too much to expect politicians in the media to tell the truth about the U.S. healthcare system. And I'm the type of person, if I have money in my pocket, I'm not gonna, and somebody doesn't, I'm not gonna hesitate to spend my money. Or if I'm out eating, I wanna, you know, I wanna eat good food. There's been times where I've been in New York and I'm spending at least $800 a month just on going out. What do you think you spend per month eating out? Oof, um... Probably close to $500 a month. <laughs> I tend to eat a lot. No, it's not cheap. And especially if you want access to alternative care, uh, which means a lot to me, like all acupuncture or, or those kind of things, herbal treatments. This filmmaker has received no funding from the health insurance or healthcare industries. 